This is Deborah Jang East of Skywatcher Radio. We're working in conjunction with DJ Flame of UFO Radio. Pro from Great Britain. UFOs, paranormal, discussions about all kinds of things that go on in the sky with a little bit of music. That's SkywatcherRadio.com and UFO Radio. Pro. Come on, join the debate. Um, this is uh, DJ Flame on UFO Radio. Pro in conjunction with Skywatcher Radio and uh, that's uh, Deborah Jane East so you're going out uh, on two radio stations all right fabulous yeah it's great to be here DJ Flame good we're broadcasting all the way from North Carolina in the good old USA right then so um Basically, I, I know the story, might be, but what I usually like to do is say, right, in your own words, tell us uh, where all this started from. Where, you know, what uh, what got you involved in this subject? Because I know you've been tra- you've been travelling around, uh, and uh, I can tell, you know, when we spoke the other day, so um, yeah. you've, you've got quite a, a big interest in this uh, subject. I have. Now, I've been seeing things since I was a child but I never really paid much attention to it because I thought it were ghosts and things like that. And uh, as I got older, I sort of pushed it out of way. My mother was was very similar. She used to talk about seeing um, like um, a a silver ball in the sky when I was born. And I pushed it. Anyway, it went on. I grew up sort of being surrounded by all this, thinking it was the normal, and everybody else sort of live the life seeing things like that. It's only as I got older that I realised that not everybody could see these things. And I started sort of getting a little bit more interested in it instead of being a fear of it. And I'd got well into my second marriage before it really took a hold again. And I took um, a photograph of my um, grandchild's first birthday and I never saw nothing on the picture at all. But when I put it up on the computer, there's um, a pear-shaped, quite good pixelation, good, a good quality picture of this, well, UFO sitting right in the sky when one of my grandchildren were born. So I took it to the local paper and they sort of published it and made a bit of fun of it and everything, you know, take me to thy leader, etc., because we're Yorkshire. And um, and that was it really. It was swept under the carpet again. But there was there was some sort of I don't know fire somehow relit in me. So I carried on and I got a lot of uh, made camera. I've always liked photography. Um, so I got all my camera equipment out and I started going off and poking around, just taking random pictures. And um, the more I sort of got my head round of thinking about that it is a possibility of other life forms and things, the more I seem to be able to capture and see. And it's like, I feel like they're giving it, giving it me in like little jigsaw pieces. And you get a little piece at jigsaw once you've accepted that, that part of what's going on. Do you understand? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. And um, so it just carried on from there anyway. Um, we, I'd go up Ilkley Moor because they said that was a good UFO spot and that's when we took these round. it wasn't even me that took the picture it was one of my um, co-pilots so to speak um, just taking randoms what I used to just take randoms and um, we found that uh, alien picture of Ilkley Moor and as you know it's a famous place for um, abductions and there's US spy base up there as well so there's quite a lot of um, a shroud of secrecy up there. Anyway, uh, we copped these little creatures two weeks later, and it was only by chance because I asked Dids. I said, "Did you check over the randoms?" Uh, and he said, "Well, no, not yet. I've looked, but it's sort of just a load of rocks." Anyway, I, I takes it off him. I says, "Look, I'll take it home and do it myself because obviously his interest wasn't as great as mine." So I'll go on. This is when I found that these creatures, so of course I'm, I'm absolutely ecstatic. I showed the people that were with us, there were four or five of us in all, 
and uh, they were they were there with us when the randoms were taken. Nothing was seen at the time or anything, and they were just as, as much astounded as I was. And we thought that these pictures would just make such a really big news because come on, they they're great. And um, no, we even UFO clubs they just didn't seem to believe me or didn't want to believe me, or didn't want for me or us to have credit. I don't know, for whatever reason. And everywhere I seemed to hit, even the newspapers wouldn't touch it. They would not touch it at all. They've put the other ones I've, I've had in, you know, which, yeah. but they wouldn't, touch, they wouldn't touch that photograph at all. And, so they were um, giving you the cold shoulder then. That's really odd. Oh, yeah. Anyway, it... it, it it continued on, and then we got where we were seeing things near at home, where I actually live. And um, even my granddaughters came, and they they stood at, stood at the window, and they've seen these, and they like um, all I can describe them as is um, really big pink round lights. Well, they were pinkish lights. Um, like silver feet. Anyway, it's just gone on and on and on. So we'll get, we'll cut to the chase because it could, it could take me all night to tell you the, the incidents. But the abduction bit is, um, I just went off to work as a normal working day. I, I'd got my own cafe at the time, so it was quite busy and doing. And um, I came home as normal, and my husband were working away. I run my bath, got all my, my tackle together and everything like you do. I, got, I remember going in and turning the bath taps and everything off, but I got this compulsion to just lay on the bed. So I just laid on the bed. And um, they were like these creatures came through my window. Now, this we have two big windows in our bedroom. I normally don't open this one because if the wind catches it, it just... It's too much. So I usually always open that. So there'd be no reason for this window to be open. But this is where these creatures appeared. I couldn't move off the bed, although I knew what was going on. They came through the window. They came round, and the fear was just unbelievable. I can't not... I think the fear of not actually knowing, because I knew everything that was happening, but I couldn't move. Not actually knowing what these creatures were. It's, such a, it's a mind blow. And could I then, ask if they were the typical greys, or could you describe what they looked like, Sue? Yeah, they were. Um, now, strangely enough, the the heads of them, they were, it was like, I couldn't see them. It was like a liquid. The red were made like a liquid. But the body, they were only small, three and a half foot, I'd say, three foot maybe. And they were the thinnest creature I've ever seen. Now, I don't know if it was its skin or if it was its a suit but it was black its arms were really long really long really thin and they were black there were more than one of them i think there were three if i can remember right i think there were three and then all at once as they came round the bottom of the bed they they did something like it felt like an invisible veil where they just took away the fear and all at once they put like a mask it was like I, I i i can't remember what this mask looked like but they put it on it was like cling film and all at once next news i knew it was like clearing of a visor like if you clear your eyes when you've had got that film in them and i was looking out at earth and i was just absolutely blown away because i've never seen earth but i was looking at earth and it was just absolutely amazing but i was still aware that there were these little tiny creature, alien things with faceless they were, like a liquid stuff. And they were stood behind me, and I was actually wrestling with my human mind, thinking, why can I see the earth and also see the aliens? And my mind was trying to fight with itself, thinking, well, how can this be possible? And this... The, I can't remember if it came through the sky. I can't remember it coming from the sky. But I can remember this massive explosion. They showed me this massive, massive explosion. And my heart absolutely sunk. 
and this creature put its hand on my shoulder and it was like it was feeling my emotions. It needed to feel what I was feeling. And then through telepathy, it said, you'll be okay. Does it mean the humans are going to be okay? Or am I going to be okay? I don't know. I can't answer that. I remember looking at the ship and it was like when you blow a bubble and you see all that strange colours all intertwined, but yet it's see-through. And it was like that. It weren't very big. It were only, I'd say, as big as my room. That's it. And there were more of these creatures. And that's it. And then, bang, I were back on my bed, fully dressed, something I've never done even in my younger days of getting really druffin. I've never, ever not got undressed. I was fully dressed, everything was just as it was, and I got up and I collapsed on the landing, I grabbed the landing, and I was going to be sick, I felt, and then all these thoughts kept sort of coming back, they came back through a sort of period of a few hours, and the lodger, who rents the top uh, apartment, came down going to work, and he said, oh, morning, so, and I said, I will be in really nauseous, and I said, John, John, I think I've been abducted. And he just laughed and said, all right, so I'll see it. <laughs> and the oh, night my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. And I went off to work, and, and through, the, through the morning, things were kept, kept coming back, and that's how I've remembered this story, because, wait, I don't have to remember it, because it's there. Dreams fade. This was 2010. In the same week I got abducted, we had a man that lives, still lives at the end. They call him Martin. I've asked him if he'll record. He's a very shy gentleman and he has uh, depression problems. And I have asked him on a few occasions. Now, he says he will speak, but he doesn't want to be seen. But he witnessed something over my house that night. Like a big, he just said it was a big, shining, glowing light. There's also um, two more people from up, up on the top there, which is just slightly higher up. They saw something. They couldn't say it was over my house, but it was in that area. Um, there were crop circles turned up in, the, in our town. Apparently, there's another lady at the same time, a young lady, and she got abducted at the same time. Now, we're, in, we're a small town. We had crop circles. We had people witnessing UFOs. Somewhere along the line, something's got to be written or, or at least researched to what... Nobody seems to be interested about what's happening. It's still going on. It's still going on. Not the abductions. Not that I can remember anyway. Um... But the UFO is still going on. I'm still seeing them. I'm still photographing them. I actually, um, I've started doing slight experiments with them now to see if they're intelligent, if we are communicating. And they are. I actually jumped up like um, the madman on Eureka one time because I actually said to them with through telepathy, and they come in like the orb shapes. People dismiss these orbs off. Don't dismiss them off. There's something to do with the energy. That's my, this is my take on it. They've got something to do with the energy of this massive energy that can come together and either project the images that they want us to see or whatever. But the, well, you know, Sue, what's really interesting about your story, number one, is that your mother, you had family members that saw these things too. That's that is what I hear a lot, you know, with some families, that it, it goes through generations. And I really liked how you described about how they took away the fear. Yeah. I don't think I've ever heard anybody describe it like that, but you said it was like they put a veil, yeah, an invisible like, veil, and it calmed you down. That's really surreal. It is. It just, it was like an invisible veil that just took away the whole fear. And somehow I felt when I was there... Nothing else mattered. And I adore my, my sons and my daughter-in-laws and my grandchildren. And my husband. And, and nothing else mattered. It never even entered my head. It all seemed to be focused around the actual earth. 
Can I ask you if they did any kind of experiments uh, or, you know, tested you or did anything like that? Because that's another common thing, you know, Absolutely when you're abducted. Absolutely nothing, nothing at all. No experiments, wow. no experiments, no probing, no needles, no nothing. It was just like a surrounding of absolute and love. If I didn't know any different, because I don't really do um, religion, but if I didn't know and I didn't think that way, I would have thought that I were in heaven with aliens because the peace and the serenity that was with them, like I felt almost like I were part of them somehow, not in the human form, like I was, I should have been there and everything seemed to make sense. Well, you know, it's it's funny that you just said that because I have a friend who has written a book. Her name is Sherry Wilde. And uh, Rejoining the Cosmic Family um, is her book. And she talked about experiencing those same things, like she felt a part of their family. And later on, they, they told her that she was. So it's sort of like you're saying they took you, abducted you to give you a message, sort of. Yeah. I mean, I've got, I've got a photograph, and uh, it was really strange one night. And husband were just going off to the shop, and I'm always poking out at the top before uh, Lodger were living up there, when it was empty. I'm always uh, poking out at the top with my um, camera equipment and uh, night vision glasses, etc. And um, husband were just going to the shop, and he says, have you seen it? And I said, yeah, I'm on it. And outside the house, and it came along, just one, this one cloud, it came along, and I've got shots unfortunately i didn't have a video then but i've got shots multiple shots and it came along this cloud it stopped in front of the house it made a shape what looked like a mushroom upside down it continued to make cloud and come down it went into a proper beautiful perfect ball and it stayed there and then when the ball went it turned into a really big heart shape and just went and I've got all the photographs step by step. I've never, ever seen. My husband was stood there as well watching it. Never, ever seen anything do this or act like that. But somehow, I've got another video where I'm taking an aeroplane. I was just taking a run of the mill aeroplane. And um, when I look back, because I do look back and slow my videos down and everything like that, and it's amazing what you can, what the human eye, we only see in six million pixels. And these beings are working in far billions more than that. But the day of the good camera, if you slow things down on the video camera now, you're surprising what you can catch. And I was videotaping this um, airplane, and when I slowed it down, this sort of, uh, well, I call it cloud. These two clouds come out. You can see it manifest into like a little ball. It, and they come forward. It slows it down. And it actually rolls past and comes past the camera and goes off again, followed by a little one that's a V-shape. And it happens all, all the time, everywhere, everywhere. I think the more, you, um, the more you open your mind, the more they let you see. But I just can't get enough of it. Can't get enough of it. Well, I just read a really interesting article that was talking about how uh, this man used an infrared camera mm -hmm. to video at nighttime. Yeah. And he said, basically, this is what you have to do to capture the invisible UFOs that you can't see with your human eye. That's right. And he took two cameras side by side, one just a regular camera, and the other, um, he had the infrared they were pointed in the same direction, and he got pictures of UFOs in one picture, anomalous-looking shapes, and the other one was clear. So it's obvious that a lot of times, you know, uh, they're hiding in plain sight. They're invisible. That's it. They are. They are. And there's more and more people coming forward saying, I mean, uh, like Russ uh, just said something about the shadow person the other day, Russ. Do you remember? Well, that's right, yeah. Yeah, and um, both me and my granddaughter have seen these shadow people. Um, it's just like when they flash past your eye and they're like that and they're quite tall, they're really tall and skinny and they can move like nothing with nothing that I've ever seen. And that that's obviously another different type. 
there must be quite a few types. But I, I'm, I'm a, this type thing, is it what they're projecting? This is what I keep asking myself. Are they projecting the type into the he, in the he, mind of the person like us that they you think that they should be like? Or is well, it all you know, one type? Somebody told me one time that uh, when they were, this was another person that was abducted, they were talking to the alien, and she said, is this what you really look like? And he answered back to her, no, this is just the container that I'm in for you so that you can feel comfortable with me and not be afraid. Yep. So when, when he said that, that made me think, just what you mentioned, that they can change our perception of what we see with our vision to be shadow people or to be the creatures that you saw. The funny thing is, though, if you ask the person who who, uh, they said that to, if you ask him or her, if if they did feel frightened when they saw um, the the creature, uh, I wonder what what the result would be. Because if they're saying, well, this is um, like something that surround us, what we use, so that you're not afraid. Well, what happens if they are actually afraid? Because then it won't make any sense. Well, you know, the initial thing that abductees uh, usually speak about in the beginning is they're paralyzed. They can't move. And I've experienced something like that. It's called sleep paralysis where you are aware of your surroundings, but you can't move your hands, you can't turn your head. It was it was so terrible. It was horrifying. And I can't imagine if you were being abducted that you, I mean, you would have to feel fear. And I don't understand how they can make some people feel like everything's okay. I'm assuming it's some kind of a form of mind control. I don't know. I don't know, you see, because I've been looking into, I, I, started digging into why why me so i started digging around and i found that a lot of abductees are actually of rare blood groups they call it universal blood which is rhb negative there's um, a massive percent of them uh, it's somewhat ridiculous it's all concentrated in basque area of spain and there's a few dotted about elsewhere but they all seem to have this trait with this rhb negative blood uh, could that be something to do with it? Because it seems strange that we they can't link our blood to anything on this earth. I can't really say that um, that, that is uh, right or, or you know is. Uh, I, I've heard of, about this rare blood group and what have you. But the problem is, I have you for instance have you actually been and had your blood tested? Yes, I'm RHB negative. Right, because I can honestly say I don't know that many people that have been abducted that have actually gone to find out what blood group they are. No, they probably are because they're not like me, are they, Russ? Once I get my teeth into some, I keep... I should have been a detective, you know. I'd have been made once I... <laughs> well, I... Well, I'm an investigator, to be honest, and I've investigated a lot of cases, and it's something that has never really, you know, sort of like... Um, oh, it- never really entertained before. Yeah, well, ask, ask Russ. Start and ask people these abductees and go put it on net. You'll find that there's a lot lot of them that got this blood group and they can't link it. I went into looking why. Everybody else has linked to Recess Monkey, but this blood group isn't. So, like a lot of other people have said, well, if it isn't linked to anything on this earth, then shouldn't the scientists be looking somewhere else because they're going to find the answers? But they haven't. They've sort of just, oh, never mind that lot. Let's just brush it under the carpet. Now, I never knew that until I started digging around. But you did say that they didn't do any kind of medical test on you. None whatsoever, no. None whatsoever. No. Were, and were you the only person in the ship at yeah. the time this was happening? Yeah. The only human? Yep, yeah, just me and them. So how many times have they actually been and and actually contacted you? Well, the abduction, I can only remember the once of. But going back when I was a child, who knows? What I'd class off as a dream or something could have happened. I mean, a lot of us went camping a couple of years back down at um, a local beauty spot called Appleyard. There were 20, maybe 25 of us, children, everything. 
and something came very low across the top of us and we all sat there with cameras and videos and we all looked at each other and then Mick, joker of the pack, said that was an aeroplane and we all went like that, no it weren't, no it weren't and it came really low and then within minutes I said to my son, gosh it's got dark none of us actually questioned had we got some more missing time there because it was mid-afternoon one time and suddenly it was dark nobody questioned it was they in this blur did we all saw the craft it was massive but why didn't you you know like you said earlier you know when you've got your teeth into something you want to so how comes you never went looking for the missing time well, when I question the rest of them, they just start laughing and think it's funny or whatever. So, yeah, yeah, you might be right. Yeah, yeah, we might be right. That's it. Because if you're not interested in the subject, you're not interested. So, with me nattering, my, my friends would just tell me to bugger off, basically. Or bugger off, sick of hearing it, so don't know, might have been abducted, don't know, don't care. And that's the attitude. You know, um, I have questioned them. And that's what I get back. So. No, but well, it, go ahead, Russ. What I was meaning to say is, you know, you, you don't really need to have to question them if you've got a watch, you know, and sort of like you know what time it was when you. Yeah, I know, Russ, but I didn't. We'd, we 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 were all playing with children. We've got a bonfire. We're getting wood together. This incident happened while we were all sat around having a beer. And then all at once it would come in dusk. We sort of all had a bit of a chuckle, carry on having a beer, and that were it. And then afterwards, when I've questioned them and said, "Did you think it was something funny? What did you see? Did, was that an airplane? No, it wasn't an airplane." So, um, so I have questioned them, but we never took the time. So we knew, we all knew it was sometime in the tea time area. Yeah. Um, to come in dusk, so. <gasps> I bet I could question him again. Well, I'm interested. Uh, you talked about when you had your abduction that other people in your community spotted something in the sky. No, they spotted it over the top of my house. Over your house? Yeah. Wow. How many How many different people saw that? Uh, there's two from up the top, Michelle's uh, brother and his girlfriend. They, weren't sh they knew the area. They couldn't see it on the roof, but the guy at the end of the road who looked straight at my house saw it. it every night he used to go and take his grandma, uh, go up to his grandma's and put her to bed. And you could set your watch by Martin, 12 o'clock on the dot, he got his scooter out and he went to his grandma's to put her to bed. And he was there and he came on on the Saturday and he was actually speaking to my husband. And when he said, oh, you better tell her then, I thought something was wrong with the children. I says, well, what's up, Martin? He said, oh, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not being funny, so he says, but when I went to my grandma's the other night, he said there was a big, massive, white, bright light over the top of your house, dead over the top. I says, did you get a video? Did you get a picture? He said, so, and this is just the words he said, he said, so, I'll be quite honest. He said, I was shitting my pants when I seen it because I didn't know what it was. He says, and I absolutely, never mind getting a, a picture. He was absolutely petrified because he'd, he was seeing something that he'd never witnessed. So, but he'd be willing. Well, you certainly have co uh, corroborating evidence. I mean, if they saw that, that's really interesting. Yeah, they did. Not only that, I mean, we've never had crop circles in this town, ever, 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 ever. I've even looked it up on net, never. And we had two crop circles in town at the same time of the abduction, same time as the guys seen the thing over my, my roof, same time the other people did. Um, what kind of patterns were in the crop circles? Do you remember, or did you uh, were you able to get a picture? Well, they're, they're actually on the on the YouTube. If you look, if you put cast little crop circles, and it, it this guy that uh, analyzes crop circles, um, he's actually analyzed it, and it's something to do with Babylon. Believe it or not, me not being religious, but it's something to do with Babylon, and it tells you all about it on um, YouTube and what these circles mean. It just looked like three circles or four circles, but apparently because they were spaced at certain parts from each other, it was something to do with this um, symbol of Babylon or something like that. You can find all the details out on YouTube. 
Right. But it's strange that there's two crop circles in this town that's never been. And then there's another girl pops up. We're only a small, small town. Um, and pops up and says, yes, she's been abducted by the Greys in 2010. Experiences very, very near mine. Very, very similar. Was she uh, similar to the same age that you are? No, she's um, in her 20s, whereas I'm in my 50s. Only just though. <laughs> wow. That's really, really interesting. Uh, did you ever notice if there were any newspaper articles about sightings at that time? or? Um, well, there would have been, but um, they sort of brush it under the carpet a little bit here. Um, and if they do print anything, they tend to ridicule you for it. So a lot of people don't. Oh, we got space jelly as well. I forgot to tell you that. We actually got space jelly turning up in the village as well. That's what they named it. And it would end up in people's back gardens, like this jelly stuff and on the moors, at the same times that these... Um, these craft are being seen. There are loads and loads of reports of it. Um, crafts being seen, this ab these abductions that's gone on, crop circles. I mean, I've got a short video. It's a bit of a flaky video. But this is, a, uh, this is how sneaky they are. I was looking through the weird all this commotion one night. And there must have been five, six choppers in the sky, which is unusual for you. You might have the police helicopter now and again and everybody goes out to have a look because it's pretty you know so they were absolutely bedlam going on so i gets my camera and i runs upstairs into the top top room opens windows and i could see a lot of kerfuffle going on this is where we all camped and we saw this craft at one point and there were all this going on loads and loads of choppers they were absolutely bedlam going on so i gets my video not a very good one at the time which is a shame i'm over excited anyway this craft came out of the valley really slow, just hovered up and hovered out. There were all these helicopters round them. And then it just went on. My video went off at that point. But it, it came on and it went off and it just shot off. Now then, I said, I know what I was witnessing. I was banging on the floor. Come up, come up, look, look, look. So I was looking through the monoculars at the same time as I'm trying to film. Anyway, the day after, I asked other people now then because we live in villages people if you've been a long time villagers and your parents are and the other people you get to know people all over the, the other little villagers so anyway the day after they gave this cock and bull story about um they said in marsden which is a village further up two guys had fallen into the river pinching lead and they'd had to send a sea king out and they had a picture of a sea king not the sea king a picture of a sea king with 70 miles in land i've never seen one here ever in my entire life and the sea king came to try and catch these two guys that had been pinching lead from a mill up the valley by the time it got to linthwaite some children on a raft had gone down they cornered everything off you see police couldn't get near it when they got to Cowsley, my mate stopped in a car because she could hear all the commotion in the valley, got out to have a look. The police ushered her back into the car and said there'd been a drive-by shooting. We had three, four different stories. With me running a cafe as well, you see, he talked to everybody. And they'd even cheat to put this seeking picture of it in the, in the front of the paper. And so there wasn't no seeking that came out of that valley. That was not a sea king. That was a craft that came out of our valley. But there you go. They cover everything up, don't they? So what year was this? Um, I think it'll be about... It might be 2011. Right. I, could, I could find it in archives. That, um, I could find the exact date for Uddersfield Examiner. Because right. it were in there. One lady actually complained that it had... Uh, this sea king... I actually took a picture of it there after as well because uh, I think it was um, it was autumn time and leaves were ready. A good breeze had brought them leaves down. Never mind seventy foot span on a sea king. And I went down and took some pictures of the river and the canal that runs parallel to each other of this sea king being down there. There wasn't even a leaf that had trembled through that valley. So I know what came up that valley. Anyway, 
like I said, they won't believe you. They don't believe you. I know what happened. And other people have come and said, yeah, ain't it funny that? Why did they say it was somebody um, pinching lead? Why did they say it would have a drive-by shooting? Why did they say it? Because they didn't want them near, so they just made the story up. Because they didn't want anybody. One lady rang up and said she wanted compensation because it had lifted a complete uh, big trampoline and uh, crushed this trampoline to pieces in a garden. I don't believe wow. that. I don't believe it. I don't believe for one minute that it did um, because there wasn't even a leaf shook the day after when I went down. Sue, do you remember if there were any missing people reports around the time you were abducted or have you noticed in the paper about any missing people? Do you know what? I haven't. No. You see, I don't, I don't read papers. If I, if I read anything, I'm, I'm usually go on net um, and look at the local. But I never really thought about that, you know. No, I never thought about that. Yeah. I will have a look. I'll have a look at that. Well, you know, sometimes when there's a lot of sightings in an area, a lot of activity, a lot of times there are several missing people. So I was just curious. Yeah, it might be worth me having a little delve about, might it, for that, and see. I could probably find it. Can't I? I might even go down library. One of the best ways is uh, looking on um, missing persons uh, for that year. Um, if you go 2010 in Huddersfield, yeah. 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 Hey, that's a good idea, Russ. Thank you, uh, Rachel. Thank you. If you go on for that year, right, yeah, and you'll be able to see all the missing people, um, you know, around the, the UK, you know, and the, the, the days and times that they went missing. Do you know, it's funny you've said that, Russ, because... My friend Ellen, I think it, it might be about four or five years ago now, they used to call him Superman, uh, Cooperman, his name was Steve Cooper. Mm. He's been all over national TVs and everything, because he went missing. Right. And they found his car by a lock in Scotland. Scotland. Said, I remember, yeah. Uh, yeah, I remember seeing that on television. Steve, well, he only lives to, he's my friend Ellen's um, brother-in-law, he was. They still never found him to this day, and I never even thought about that. Yeah. Never even, they've never even found any evidence. I mean, I knew Steve, and he didn't cross me. He just liked to go to work, see to his family, and go for a pint at weekend, a run-of-the-mill ordinary guy. And they've found no trace or nothing and, and car at Scotland. I mean, she had no connection with Scotland, so even wife can't understand why. Or did somebody put it there? Well, in a lot of cases, uh, when people go missing and, and are abducted, uh, there's all sorts of strange things happen. Like, for instance, usually they're clothed in a way that they shouldn't, meaning they've got their clothes on back to front. Sometimes, you know, sort of like it has been known to have the underwear on the outside, you know, yeah. pants, you know, shirts on inside out and, and all sorts of daft, you know, sort of like things. That Missing shoes, all kinds of all yeah, stuff, strange things. Yeah. Shoes on wrong feet. You know, just sort of bizarre. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? It's weird how he went missing as well. It's only just really, it's only just crossed my mind. I thought he'd just done one, you know. But you never know, do you? No. Because there's some, there's some funky stuff goes on up this valley. They call it um, UFO Alley. I'm not surprised. Well, this is it. You know, I mean, the, the thing is, you know, there's more than just seeing, you know, sort of like craft. There's, there's all the... The other strange things that uh, go with it, like you said, there's abductions, you know, um, people going missing, you know, sort of like um, strange sounds, you know, strange uh, things turning up, you know, like uh, for instance, devil dogs turn up and what have you. Sometimes apparitions, sometimes people, you know, sort of like get um, terrible, um, you know, sort of like feelings. Yeah. Um, of, you know, foreboding and what have you. Yeah. All, all sorts of very, very strange things happen. I think so. I'll give, you, I'll give you an example of one strange thing that happened at a house that we used to live in where we saw a UFO. My father was sitting on the front porch with the landlord, and it had a tin roof and everything, and all of a sudden that apple came and bounced off the roof. 
And Mr. Tabor said, Fred, did you see that? That was an apple. But there's no apple trees around here. So they walked all the way around the house to see if there was anybody there because me and my sisters, we'd all went to town with my mom. Well, they went and sat back down and another apple, five minutes later, bounced off the roof. And they walked around again. There was nobody there. So, you know, my father's not one to make up stuff like that. So that certainly was like, you know, odd. Yeah. Yeah, I can relate to that as well. I mean, not just UFOs, but many years ago, I lost one of my children. And uh, one of his favorite things was he used to absolutely love his 20Ps. Anybody, uh, shiny 20Ps. And it was a few years later when we moved into this house with my second husband. And we were sat in the back room in conservatory there, and a 20P dropped out of the, just out of the air from nowhere, rolled across the floor, and it was the 20P that belonged on his grave up at the top that were outside with his um, date of birth on, and we took it back up. So that was strange. That's more than, yeah, that's that is more, very weird. That is more than strange. That is paranormal. Yeah, paranormal, yeah. It's, it's like, a, I don't know, they must have been sort of, well, they, they must be able to just, like a wormhole, you know, jump time or whatever. Marvellous, amazing. I'll tell well, you do you get time. afraid? Do you get afraid to go to sleep at night, Sue? Do you have any dread? No, no, none at all. None at all. No fear whatsoever. I walk around in house in dark. My grandchildren and everything think my house is creeper. It's not creeper. (laughs) (laughs) It's not creeper. It's just that um, I just uh, accept things. It's like um, when my sons used to come in when they all lived at home. They'd say, Mum, light bulb's going. I'd say, no, it's not. And I used to go out and say, all right, I know you're here. Right as rain. Right as the woman, they say, oh, mum, you're so weird. Oh, if they come into my room, if they do this, you know, really fit. I said, don't, don't be scared of anything. Don't be scared. They're not going to do anything to you. Be it paranormal, because I think they're closely linked and they're one of the same thing. Because they can do the same thing. They're in, they're in this same dimension somewhere. That's my take on it. I mean, everybody's got a different take, but that's my take on it. And I've been progressing with... Um, trying to find out how intelligence and how close they're going to let me get. Sometimes they have played, um, tri- I think, not tricks, but I think sometimes they've tested my intelligence uh, to the limit to actually let me see something and then completely dish it where I'll doubt myself again. And I know, I've started to learn now that I know it's like the testing me to to push me intelligence to see just how far I'm willing to sort of go. A bit like taking the red pill, isn't it, and the blue pill. Um, but I found that they do communicate with te- telepathy. Uh, these orbs that people dish off, don't, don't dish these orbs off. These orbs are amazing things. I've, I've even had the lodger, I've roped him into it, sitting out back and um, holding his hands out and see if we can get them where... It, you can't see them with it. You can see them under the flash of the gun. They like glitter. They look like glitter. And um, when you get them, and I actually asked them, and I said, through to left, I didn't tell anybody. I did this all on my own. I went out, and I just said in my mind, I said, right, okay, if you are, if your, your orbs are some sort of intelligence that can form or um, project or whatever, are we communicating? We need to know that we're communicating. And um, I asked them to go green. I said, can you go green then? Then I'll know, like green for go. And uh, I came back in and loaded up the pictures. And I didn't say anything. And I just zoomed in and I just turned it around to my husband that's not really particularly interested in in UFOs and things. He just doesn't like it. He says, if they come, he's going to point to me. And um, (laughs) and, um, he actually sat on the settee and I said, what colour are those? And he said, oh, they're weird ones, aren't they? Why are they green? I was ecstatic. I thought, we're doing it. Another time I were upstairs in attic again, and my cat always sits with me a little bit, sir. And um, I'm taking photographs. I've actually sent you one of these, Russ, of that cat. It's like a picture of a cat um, in the sky. And uh, they drew a cat, this, this 
crass thing. It changes shape. There's a few. I sent you three, I think, Russ, from the same one, same batch. And it changes shape, and it actually grew, it drew the cat in the sky. Now, one of these UFO clubs said to me, oh, no, that's just camera wiggle. And I said, right then, I said, you get yourself out, you find something what, that's light, and wiggle, wiggle a cat. Please wiggle a cat picture for me with a camera, because it's virtually impossible. It's impossible. You can do anything you want, analyze the uh, pictures, anything you want to them. They've not been tampered with at all. And they actually drew my cat sitting on the roof in the sky. So how cool is that? <laughs> Well, you mentioned that you had uh, some health issues, that you were nauseated after your abduction. Did you sustain any future health issues? No, none at all. That you can think of? No. Just the nausea? Just just the nausea. On the week, I felt weak, like um, I'd got incredible jet lag. Yeah, a lot of abduction um, stories, you know, you hear about uh, afterwards they have nausea or different things like that. Mm. I know that I, I suffer with ME now. Um, after, I suffer with ME after oh, I... Oh, yeah. After I've done my... Uh, say again? Is it ME? ME, yeah. Yeah. My algae and Um oh, I don't... I think my friend Ellen's got that. I'm sure she has. And has she had a, an experience? Has she been abducted? Oh no, no, no. But uh, I was I was okay before. I was okay before I uh, I was abducted, and then uh, just started off, you know. Did they probe you then, Ross? Did they did they probe me? Yeah. In what way? Well, I don't know. Like Rachel's just asked me, didn't they, if they probe me out? I said no. Uh, I've had all sorts of strange things uh, happen to me, to be quite honest. Uh, nothing like the laying down on a, a, a bed or, you know, one of these, um, you know, sort of like uh, when you go into a doctor's uh, room and what have you. Um, it were more, we were more um, sat down in these in like invisible chairs. Um, with these headphones on and uh, made to watch images uh, and what have you and uh, they taught us things um, which was like through hologram you know like from uh, watching oh, yeah. hologram um, and yeah, sort of like <coughs> that kind of thing um, and there, there was a time when uh, something was put in my throat down my mouth um, which I didn't like. That was at the first, um, sort of like uh, the first time. Um, and uh, with people walking around. I can't really remember much of that. I think I've, I've, I've blanked it out. And this is why I don't like go to, you know, sort of like see dentists or anything. Um, yeah. You know, but um, nothing as such. Have you ever had a total regression, Russell? No, no. Because I haven't really needed it, because I've remembered most of all the other things. When the come and take us, uh, the, the, the suitors and booters put us into uniforms, and then the takers, and uh, how we travel and everything. Um, I know that uh, the places where we've been, uh, the users wearing military units, and the users as soldiers, and um, I know who, who takes us, um, I know like the, the four different types, um, the officer class. Um, you know, sort of like the takers, and I know that we've done some pretty horrendous things. Uh, I, I, I can honestly say, mm. you know, as, so, as soldiers, you know, we've, we've uh, obviously yeah. done things what soldiers do, which isn't a nice thing. No. Well, you know, I've seen uh, videos, and I've also heard people talk about how many different species of aliens uh, that there are. Yeah. And there's, you know, several. I mean, I can't imagine uh, that there would be that many, 57 different species. But, you know, people mention uh, the reptilians and the greys and the tall and whites. The and, yeah, so there's a lot of different types. And I'm sure the personalities and their, um, and their agenda is all different. Where did you see the reptilian? In 
in the back garden and my lodger can vouch for me as well it was done in the flash because I usually tip my I've got a Nikon for the good shots and I tip my Nikon up because it's 24 million pixel and in the flash I was facing forward and the guy that has the top flap was stood at the side of me and in the flash it was just stood there right in front of me now my steps I've got three steps so I measured them It'll be about three and a half foot, I would say. And it looked like, at the time, I had an iguana. It looked just like an iguana, but bigger, and it was stood up. I can't remember if it, I think it, it, I can't remember, but I think it may have had some sort of, like, leather, I don't know, like, I, I don't know, it was weird. But it was there in the flash of the camera, and I must admit, I absolutely packed my pants, and I ran inside. At the time, we had some um, some uh, solar lights in the back garden. And they had worked for quite a number of years because they were full of rainwater. And at the time that this reptilian thing appeared in the flash of the camera, the whole of the back garden lit up. The guy who has the flat upstairs didn't see the reptilian because he was busy rolling a fag, but he did see all the back lights. And he said, bloody hell, what's going on? What's happening? I'd already left him at this point and gone in the house because it just absolutely blew me away. I did. I absolutely packed my pants. And I came in and I said, I'm not going back out there. And I told him what I'd seen. And he said, oh, come on, let's go back. I said, I'm not going back out there. I just can't. I, just, I needed a cup of tea. I was in shock. So he went back out and I said, well, I'll take a photograph of you standing where I was and uh, you go up there and take the photograph. And I took the photograph. And that's the one I sent you, Russ, with John's head on. Right. That, that, that bars the swing at the top and the privet. And what we got, what it looks to me similar, if you do it in different tones, it looks to me a bit like that famous painting scream. And it was just going off because I stood in the house. I wouldn't come back out. And that's the only reptilian I've seen. But it were there looking at me, not above six inch away from my face. And it looked like an iguana. And I'll, I'll That's too it. close for comfort. <laughs> so I, I'll, yeah, I thought it was too, Rachel. <laughs> How tall was it then? Um, judging by my steps at the back, and I to me, I'm five foot four, and the steps, so I'd say about three foot, maybe a bit less. It might have been two foot something, but not much more than that. And it was well, it's, it's certainly interesting that there is an unseen world, possibly, that's all around us that... We have a, no idea that's going on. Yeah, I think that's right. And like I say, I think the more that you open your mind and the more that you're sort of comfortable with what's happening, the more that they let you see. Can that's I ask you, can I ask you well, something now, uh, Sil? Uh, have you ever done anything like um, um, any training in your life, like martial arts or anything? No. Have you ever done anything like yoga? No. Have you ever done anything um, where you um, you do meditation? No, I don't take any man-made pills whatsoever. No meditation. Oh, meditation! I said medication. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, no, no, I haven't. Right. Okay. Um, have you ever um, delved in uh, to um, magic or anything? No. Uh, Ouija boards. No, definitely not. Right. I won't be opening gates of hell for anybody, them Ouija boards. No, not for me. Right. Can I ask you, how did you feel about UFOs in general before you were abducted? Did you think it was just like something that Hollywood made up, or did you no, I, already, no. already have like a preconceived idea? No, because when my son was born, the first born, this is how me and my mum got talking about it. I went up and told my mother what I'd seen, and she told me then that she'd seen the same thing when I was born. And then a few years later, we were down what they call, they used to call, tip, they've planted trees on it now, but at one time, we used to be able to take the children tobogganing, which we did, me and my sister. And I remember another incident down there. Um, I'd got about three children then, and while they were all sliding down hillside, this uh, great big, um, well, spacecraft cave over silent with loads and loads of lights strobing window lights and it came over and i was absolutely astounded and i'm saying wow look at that look at that 
And I just assumed that everyone else had seen it like I had. And it wasn't till years later when I was talking to my sister about it. And she said, what are you talking about? And I said, you know, she said, I remember playing down there with children and everything. I remember it all. She said, but I didn't see no spaceship. And I actually thought at one point, I'm losing my marbles. You know, I'm a psychotic or something. And then it just carried on and on and on. And there's absolutely stories all through my life. I mean, right from being a child, or about two years old, this uh, mist stuff used to come into the bedroom and uh, swirl on top of the ceiling and make things that a child could relate to, uh, giraffes and things like that. And um, I, I was whispering at my mother, and um, my mother being a little bit like that herself, she changed bedrooms uh, because I kept going on about this here mist and things coming in. And I changed bedrooms, and... Um, my brother, who was three, and I'll tell you today, he's, had, he's got a different take on what he saw, but he saw what I saw. And I saw this mist come and appear at the bottom of the bed. My brother said it was a, a bogeyman, let, let rip screaming, and bam, I just stopped seeing <laughs> I just stopped seeing it from then on. Uh, another incident when I was little, I came to the top of the stairs. We lived in a farmhouse at the time. And uh, I remember it, all whitewashed walls. And I would only be, I can pinpoint from when I was born up there to be in about two, two and a half when we moved, maybe three. Um, so I'd be about two, two and a half. And I remember going to the top of the stairs and all at once something picked me up. But not physically, it was like, again, being in an vis invisible bubble. And it floated me down to the bottom of the stairs. And I ran in and said to my mother that I'd flown down the stairs. And me and my mum were very close before she died. And um, she told me she could, the incident, she could remember me coming in, saying, pulling at her apron, saying, I've flown down the steps. She says, and she could verify this mist and things I saw in my bedroom. Um, but my mother was very like that because she's told me stories of what she used to see as a child and things. So is it something that runs through the family, maybe? Are we a bit psychic? Maybe. I don't know. But um, it just goes on and on and on. Um, we've had ghosts in this house. My children to this day will not stay in this house. And it's not the house. It's every house I've lived in. Um, it's so it me seems that I just... Follow yeah, it follows you, not the house, necessarily. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's not following the house. Um, my husband, who was here, Robert, um, had never seen anything. as my second husband. And he was 39 when he married me. And um, he'd never seen or heard nothing. Didn't want to know, not interested. And he could tell yourself the amount of things he's seen. He's had, uh, he had a lady hold him down in the bedroom when we were living with my dad when we were buying this house and before it was finalised. And she held him down and gave him a good scrutiny. I dare say I'll put that down to my mum. And um, he's it, it's, it's seen UFOs with me from the window. He's seen them through the binoculars. said, tell me what that is. Tell me. is that an, And he's seen things with me that he's never seen before and experienced. It doesn't matter where we go. Um, or what we do, there's always something that we either pick up on camera or witness or something. I don't know. So is it me? Is it my family? Because it's my son. My son's got a lot of stories as well, and his, his wife. Uh, ours as they've moved in. They were sat one night and uh, near Christmas. They'd only got the first grandchild at the time. She's 17 now, Bethany. And... Um, they were sat watching TV and it were an open staircase where with stairs inside the lounge and all the strobe lights came down. He said we thought it was some sort of uh, soundless fireworks and things. And um, they came strobing down. They came out the house, locked the house up and went. And uh, I tried to talk to him and said, look, it, it may, may be your grandma or whatever, come to see, you know, first great-grandchild, whatever. Just accept they're there. So they, they went home. And uh, it was in house, the uh, wife had gone out, took the child to town, and he said, I did what you said, Mum. So he ended up back at my house again. I said, why, what's up? And he said, um, I did what you said, Mum. And I said, um, yeah, okay, I know you're here. What, what do you want? He says, and they slammed the door, Mum, and the key locked in the door, and the window slammed shut. He says, and I ran upstairs and climbed out the bedroom window. So, no, I'm not asking them anymore what they want. They've moved into this other house and still on occasions now, they hear strange uh, 
things going on in house and uh, the children do. My granddaughter Leah can actually come up into the attic with me and we've actually summoned them. We've actually, I've, I've said, all my hands and if you want to see them, ask them. And they've appeared in the sky just outside here like, they were like a, a really goldy pink, a pinky ball, like light. Don't, it's bright but it doesn't hurt your eyes. Uh, my, my grandson came round with his friend round the corner. They ran in here. He's 14. In fact, I've got the, I've still got the pictures. They ran in here and said, "Oh, quick, quick, Grandma, get outside. There's a spaceship over your house again." So I went outside and I caught a little bit of it just as it was going there. And I said, "Now then," I said, "Get over there." And I both gave him a pen and a piece of paper each. I said, "Don't speak to each other. Draw it. Write it down. What did you see?" And they're absolutely identical. So my grandchildren and everybody, you know, are seeing it. So what's that about? <laughs> well, it certainly does seem to be following your family, and I've heard that before. Yeah. So just keep your camera ready. Is, that's all I can say. Keep that's your what camera I do, ready Rachel, and, on the doc red day. Even in and the documentation. Even in the middle of the night, I'm there waiting, ready. <laughs> so, so, yeah. And we so, go off in camper van a lot at times, and uh, it's nice on the summer now because uh, I went off to watch uh, the Great Orm Skywatch, and um, we did see a couple of little little things quite high up because uh, it was a clear night. And um, the guy there, really nice guy, Jay, and he said, um, oh, it's been really good tonight, so and everything, hasn't it? And I said, well, yeah, if you sort of want to see dots in the sky. I says, but where we live? You know, they, they come much closer. I've got another short video as well of uh, Didzy and his uh, son. This is another friend uh, up in Attic where we look. And um, they watched them over what we call um, Longwood Tower here. And they, there were three of them all together. And they were like playing. And they were absolutely astounded. The guy in the Attic who was renting Attic now um, flat, he's seen them. His brother's seen them. It's just wild round here with it all the time. So, UFO Alley. <laughs> That's a good name. <laughs> yeah. And if you look on Google Maps, they've even caught one on Google Maps because I've put it up. There's even a UFO at Scammerdon Dam. Now, if you look up Scammerdon Dam, they say that there's a secret underbase uh underground base there is the only reservoir in the United Kingdom that's actually got steel enforced at the bottom of it. There's not a right big read up or write up about it, but you can you can I had a little delve in and I found out. I didn't know this, I've lived here all my life. And um there's uh, a few little stories going back as well about Scamandon Dam, um, about people when they visited the grandparents and things years ago, used to call them pixie people that lived on the hill. Now, we take the dog up there walking, and I also go up um, UFO spotting, and I've got a short video of these, like, uh, lights on the on the moor uh, by Scamandon Dam at side. They'd never seen them before. And uh, my husband was with me and the dog at the time. And uh, I got it while I was at the top of the car. And he said, my husband said, well, let's drive down to the bottom. We'll get a better view. By that point, it had gone. But there were two lights and they were the same, same sort of material, let's say, of these ones that I'm seeing. Yeah. So, um, you know, but it, I just can't seem to get enough, enough of it because every time um, something else happens, they give me a little bit more, a little bit more to chew on, and then to try and understand, to try and somehow understand uh, what what sort of beings we're dealing with. Um, so yeah, I'm um, just carry on from here and see what happens. The dam you're talking about uh, next to the M62. Yeah, Scamandon. Yeah, I know quite a lot about it because I used to work for the company uh, some years ago. Right. Um, and uh, there was supposed to have been a flying triangle actually landing there. Mm -hmm. Well, underneath that, it is you can you can find it out. It is the only uh, reservoir in the entire UK that's still enforced underneath. Now, a few months ago, they started doing some work. It's actually called Dean Ed, the reservoir that's. Um, 
stealing case. Yeah. And um, they, they were doing some work, so I thought, oh, I'll go up and have a poke around, see what they're doing. And um, as soon I mean, I've never known. They were apparently putting in a, a wider sluice uh, for the water. This, this one that were there had been there all this time and never even overflowed. But there you go. Anyway, they, they started work. And uh, it was really weird because when I actually drove down the road to where the, you would have gone up to Dean Ed, I was actually thrown off and thought, even though there's one, only one road in and one road out, I was thrown off when I got to the bottom. Because it looked like a big house, they disguised the works like a big house. They'd put two, two of those big uh, ship containers on top of each other. They had actually windows in with curtains and lights on. And they'd put like big gates across the front. And I, I, says, I said to uh, my sister-in-law, I says, when did they build this bloody house? She said, no, oh, we could, took a wrong road. I said, can't took a wrong road. There's only one road in and out. And then when we went round and back onto Hillside, and I got my binoculars out and had a look, um, there were Stevenson's and big ship container things on top of each other. So we got out of the car, we walked on over the fields, and within two minutes of us getting our flashlights out, obviously we had to because it was pitch black, there were workmen there on us straight away wanting to know why we were there, what we were doing. For somebody that's putting a sluice in, you know, 24-hour surveillance up there. It just seemed a bit odd to me. No, we, when I used to work for them, uh, we had it back then that were like uh, 16 years ago, you know. We had, to, we had special uh, ID cards and what have you. Yeah, no, but what I'm saying is they disguised what they were doing by anybody who wasn't familiar with that area would have drove by there thinking there was a big house in the grounds. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, well, they will do because of uh, the, the the money um, with, with the actual, uh, you, you know, sort of like um, some of the, the actual um, things that they're using, you know, sort of like uh, the costly. You know what I mean? You know the yeah. mater- you know the materials. Yeah. So you know you wouldn't want materials going missing because I mean, you know th- this is something that happens all over. You know with pipes and and, and what have you. So they th- th- do that as a matter of uh, security. Yeah, maybe it was. I don't know. It just seemed a little bit odd because there's some right funny goes goings on, you know, up at Scamandon. I mean. That Google Map thing takes a frame. It's only in one frame, but I found it. I went down that lane and found it, and it's there. And um, there's other people that's um, seen things up there. I mean, they have a fascination with valley as well. I am. I haven't found out what what the fascination is with the valley, or are they coming from Scamandon? Because I'm only uh, two and a half mile away from it. Uh, so is that it? I don't know. I don't know. I've got, quite, I've got quite a lot of um, reports where things have come out of dams. Hmm. And lakes. Yeah. There's, uh, there's something a bit strange about the Scamandon Dam. I mean, it's something well, you know, it's a perfect place to hide, that's for sure. Oh, well, it, it is, isn't it? It is, it is right? isn't it? But, yeah, there's some strange stuff goes on, but I'll, uh, I'll be keeping on my alert and... Uh, you never know what I'm going to turn up next, do you? Well, this is it. This is the old point. Yeah. This is why I would go out and uh, with his cameras, you know, sort of like... Uh, I mean, I don't even... To be honest, I don't go looking. I mean, I'm a, one of the British UFO hunters, and I don't have to really go hunting because the damn things are always coming to me. <laughs> you know? well, yeah. They seem to know where you're at all the time, that's for sure. Russ. Certainly do, yeah. So... You know, uh, well, yeah, I suppose I don't even have to go out because they're here all the time anyway, aren't they? But I do like to go out. I mean, I like going off in my camper, so it's just another opportunity. Plus, it gives me um, the opportunity to, to find out whether um, it's the area, and it seems to be this particular area. Uh, Todmorden's another area that's um, quite iffy with UFOs all the time. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that goes back to um, uh, what's his name now? Uh, the, 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 the the sergeant um, at Tomlin. Oh, what the heck do you call him now? It's on oh, my yeah. 
It's on my Facebook. Yeah, it's on. Um, on what that, is on the call? Um, on the call. Well, isn't that weird? You see, this is what I'm saying about them pictures of Ilkley Moore of them aliens. Um, I mean, I had an email from a, a guy that used to be a warden up there when I put it up on YouTube. And uh, he sent me this email and he said, uh, listen, next time you come up um, Ilkley, he says, uh, get your equipment and I'll take you to some places that'll make your hair curl with what goes on up there. And doesn't matter how many times, three times I've been shut down from YouTube. And I, I had 3,000 people following me and, uh, just, you know, talking to each other, etc. <laughs> And uh, got completely shut down. I couldn't get back onto it, so I had to make another one up and start from scratch. That got shut down also, so I actually lost contact with this. And all my contacts, everything just went kaput, all the lot. And I actually lost contact. Sue, did anybody ever come to speak to you, like, uh, you know, men in black or any strangers come to talk to you about your experience? No, they, I don't think they would have done because we've got a German shepherd, Rachel. And <laughs> <laughs> well, that's certainly yeah. a deterrent. So <laughs> anybody that goes past the front gate, he does his nut. So, but I wouldn't have took no nonsense from him anyway. But I do think, Rachel, that they are. Well, I think they watch everybody and anybody that takes an interest in it. I, I really do believe that. Um, I mean, I've had some pictures and videos that's completely been wiped off and obliterated, never to be found at all again. And I've spoke to other ufologists on YouTube and things, and they've had the same thing uh, happen to them. It's just completely gone. Um, so, you know, there's all sorts of things. I mean, we'd be a bit, bit daft to think that, oh, that sort of thing didn't go on. Yeah, but it does go on. It does go on, and they, are, they watch everybody all the time well i think they do have a specific interest in certain people more than others for instance you know uh russ you know still has abductions he still experiences you know the shadow people mm -hmm. it's not it's not just a uh for a lot of people it's not just a, a one-time thing yeah and i think they have a reason for doing it otherwise they would just be going random and you never get the same person twice, you know, because there's a lot of people in the world. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I know. I mean, like I say, I could have had it before, but I can't ever remember. But this this time, I just it's like it was yesterday, and it happened. And uh, they never did anything. I can't believe it was just so loving. The when I was with them, it was just just absolute tranquility. There were no thoughts of hatred, no thoughts of family, no thoughts. Just a, like a pureness, just a pureness of peace with them. This is the ones that I were with. I'm not saying they're all like that, but that's, that's what it, I... You know, it almost sounds like uh, what you're describing is like a near-death experience because, uh, you know, I had that happen to me one time and... Uh, and I got some of those feelings. It's just like uh, total peacefulness. And, yeah, you know, when you talk about it, that's what it reminds me of. Yeah. Well, I've read about the near death, and it does remind me of it. And I've got to agree with you on that. But I was actually seeing the aliens, and I seen them when I was with them. So it, it, I hadn't died on the bed. Do you understand what I mean? Yes. Um, but the experience was very similar, Rachel, it was. Uh, but it was so much... But they, they showed me... You see, you can hear him now. Can you hear the German Shepherd? That's, yeah, that's the German Shepherd. That's the Shepherd. Well, if aliens are coming, they're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> his dad's outside talking to him. Oh, he's talking to um, his friend, so he's doing his not. Yeah, he's doing his going. Funny enough as well, you know. Uh, I took Berlin up to um, the crop circle. And, uh, it, it didn't bark, but it ran round into a particular spot and it was scratching. And I wish now... All right! Um, I wish now that I'd have really dug where they were scratching because it was just one particular spot on the crop circle. But I didn't. I just pulled him away and um, took him home. But I wish now I'd have... I'd have 
had a little dig there. That's one of my regrets. <laughs> Has there been any recent crop circles? No, there's never been none before, Rachel, and there's never been none after. Wow. So, so that's strange, isn't it? Yeah, it really is that, that all of that happened that coincided with uh, your abduction. Mm-hmm. Plus this other girl. It took me four years to track this other girl. I had no knowledge whatsoever. And it was when I joined um, uh, Birmingham UFO Club. And uh, he wrote this story. And I actually ticked him off. And I said, hang on a minute. I says, why are you writing my story and changed the name? He says, I haven't changed the name, so." He says, this girl comes from Huddersfield, uh, and she's, she had the same experience, same abduction, same year you did. So I got in touch with her. I've actually met her, uh, Kate Moran, they call her, and I've actually met Katie. Unfortunately, she had all her little babies with her, so she didn't have a right lot of time to chat and talk. But um, she's going back to college in um, end of August, I think. And she sent me an email saying that we will, you know, have a meet-up, me and her, without the children, and we'll have a chat. So that should be interesting. You'll have to hook us up with her because that does sound very intriguing. Yeah, I'll have to ask her, though, if she will do uh, because um, she seems a little shy girl. But I can send her an email and I can ask. Well, that'd be great. Yeah, because she's, she's a nice girl. Uh, and it was a graze. Uh, now, she thought, she told me she thought she were dreaming. It felt like a dream to her. Uh, and she said these uh, tall greys came. But they weren't tall greys that came for me. They were small with, like, um, thin arms and, like, black, either black skin or black suit. But they were faceless. They were like, um, have you seen the Terminator when that Terminator turns into that liquid? Yeah. Well, that's what. The faces looked like like it were made out of some sort of moving liquid. That's what it looked like to me. That's what mine looked like. But, funny enough, hers were faceless. They weren't like liquid, but she said they were faceless and they were tall greys. So that was quite strange because it was very similar to mine, faceless. Well, you know, somebody else uh, shared an experience with me and... They were talking about when they were driving in their car and they looked up ahead and they saw tall men mm -hmm. uh, sort of dressed with uh, coats, heavy coats, and uh, she said, I couldn't see their face. She said they were almost faceless. And when I thought about it, I think they sort of masked what she was really seeing so she wouldn't be so terrified. Yeah, that's probably right, Rachel. Yes, I think that's right. I think that's probably what they are doing. Maybe it might have just blown blown your mind a bit. Too. But that, there again, you see, I, I, was, I felt the fear when they arrived. And like I say, they were like, it was like an invisible veil. And the fear just like came away, like you pull a, a veil off you. It just, they just took it all away. And then, hey, we need we need that kind of anesthesia here on Earth for pain. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Don't it? Yeah. Well, you certainly are very courageous for coming forward and sharing your story. Is this the first time you've ever been on radio? Yes, it is. Yeah, first time. <laughs> well, you have done an exceptional job, and uh, you know, I know it's not easy because. You know, you have family, although I know you've shared some with your family members. You know, friends, <coughs> I know when I mentioned to my friends that, you know, I do a radio show about UFOs, they never say anything. They just nod their head and give a little half smile. <laughs> yeah, because they all think we're crackers, don't they? <laughs> yeah, they do. Well, they do. They think we're crackers. Uh, but I know that they are there, they are real, it is happening. I mean, we'd be absolutely foolish to think that we was only the intelligent beings in this massive galaxy that we've got. We're just, uh, I mean, what did they say? I read something the other day that if um, if aliens were looking at so, uh, Earth from so far away, they'd actually still be watching the dinosaurs walk about. So it gives you sort of a an idea of just how massive and vast and how young our planet is in comparison 
to other planets and that we, you know, these people that scoff it off and say, boo, you know, you're off your edge, you're not right at edge, you're a lot bloody aliens, you're bloody daft. And it's them that's silly, it's them that's shutting themselves in that box. Exactly. We have only started. I mean, I know that they have, uh, you know, the Curiosity rover on Mars, but we have only barely started to travel in the universe. There are billions of other universes. Absolutely. And and it's, yeah, it's really crazy to think that there wouldn't be life on some other planet because basically we're all made from stardust. Absolutely. We're made from dead stars, our DNA. You know, we come from the stardust of these other worlds, and so it's ridiculous to think that we are by ourselves. At the beginning, Rachel, I were a little bit sheepish about talking to anybody about things like that because they just scoff at you. And as I've got older now, I don't give a fiddle. I will not tell a lie just because it makes someone else feel comfortable. I won't do it if they don't want to hear it or they don't want me you know want to be in earshot of what I'm saying but um you know I mean I'm quite well known in village with being a, a local girl and my family and uh, they'll say oh you know I still watch him for aliens so I'll say yep yeah, I am yep yeah. I'm just <laughs> well you know I'm from the south and they they think we're sassy anyhow so I don't really care what they think about me <laughs> And I don't, I don't really, <laughs> I've got a past care and I think whatever because it's you that's being ignorant really and not me and uh, you know they just like to be in their own comfort zone. So yeah you'll stay in your comfort zone but don't pick holes in mine. Um, so you know but they are out there and um, I'll keep pressing on like I say and uh, see where we lead, see where it leads me and that's it. <laughs> Well, it has been a pleasure talking with you. You have really shared some interesting information and a lot of stuff to think about. Thank you, Rachel. It's been a pleasure to be on your show and yours, Russ. You're quite welcome. Quite welcome. And we will keep in touch, Russ, and I'll keep in touch of what I'm, uh, what I'm up to and what I'm finding out. And my theories. I'll keep giving you my theories. <laughs> yeah, well, why not? Why not? Why not? That's what we're here for. And, Absolutely. Uh, Keep us, like I say, keep us uh, informed and, uh, you know, you can always come on again. Absolutely. Okay. That would be great. Okay. And thank you both. Take care. You're welcome. Take care. You too. Take care. Bye. Take care. Bye, Russ. Bye, Sue. So that... You've been listening to Skywatch, your radio show. Is there anybody, anybody out, out there? there? If you'd like to be a guest on the show, contact us through our website skywatcherradio.com or on our Facebook page.